It was a dark and stormy night in March of 2019. No, really, it was. The winds were so strong, they could take down trees and crush them to the ground. It just wasn't a good time to be outdoors, let alone sail in the ocean. Yet, the luxurious Viking Sky Cruiser was caught up in all that chaos and lost all its engines. On March 21st, the ship left Trumsa, Norway and was heading south to Stavanger. People on board got to see the northern lights and the snowy scenery around. This was going to be a short two-and-a-half-day trip. But then, wouldn't you know it, the trouble started. The forecast predicted rough weather, with the waves reaching up to 25 feet. Well, that was something the cruiser could maneuver through, but it was nowhere near what everyone experienced during the cruise. On March 23rd, the ship entered Hustavika, a dangerous part of the sea known for its rough, unwelcoming waters. The winds were tossing the ship back and forth, and as they were sailing, the waves got bigger and fiercer. Some of them went as high as 50 feet, but that's taller than the letters of the Hollywood sign. But suddenly, a huge wave came through, engulfing parts of the ship and pushing it forcefully. The wave flushed seawater through the engine room, damaging the equipment. The fuses blew, and the light bulbs in the room shut down. The socket stopped supplying power, the air conditioning stopped working, and finally, the propellers of the ship halted. The engine shut down and a full blackout followed. The cruiser, like most ships, had four engines and two high-voltage switchboards. The switchboards were supplied with power by the four alternators, which convert mechanical energy into electricity. So when all four engines of the ship shut down, everything else stopped working. Cruise ships also have emergency generators that automatically turn on. But unfortunately, they couldn't supply all the engine functions. The captain in the bridge ordered the chief engineers to go check the engines and see if the problem can be fixed on board. Yet the weather was no help in that situation. At first, everyone thought that the engine shut down because there was a lack of cooling. But the problem became even more complicated. The adrenaline levels were rushing up as the ship was battling with the 50-foot waves. The wind was blowing from the southwest, and the sailing felt bumpy. As the engine shut down, it became impossible to steer the vessel and the rough seas were pushing it towards the land. Everything happened fast, and 10 minutes after the shutdown, a mayday call was put out. As soon as the search and rescue teams heard the call, the operations started to save everyone on board. But there was another problem. When the rescue boats were released from the shore, the vicious winds made it unsafe for them to travel. Moving people from the ship in rough seas was a dangerous mission. So their only means of rescuing the passengers was with helicopters. At first, people feared that the ship would not manage to come out of it in one piece. But this was a large vessel, almost 650 feet long. Inside the ship, there were loose chairs and decorations sliding back and forth in the rooms. The plates were falling on the floor, and some of the glassware broke. Even the furniture wasn't secure anymore. The crew members advised passengers to put on their bright orange life jackets and hold on to furniture that was fixed on the floor. In the meantime, the engineers were working feverishly to fix the engines. The crew also released two anchors to keep the ship in its position, but unfortunately, the anchors failed to attach to the seabed. The helicopters were now on their way. The only thing the rescuers could see was a small dot on their maps, and it got scary as they saw the dot moving, pushed by forceful winds towards the land. A few minutes after the call, the ship was tossed into a shallow area only a few feet deep and becoming even shallower. Almost an hour passed, and a new message came in. Everyone had to be evacuated as soon as possible. The engineers were still down in the engine rooms, and they were trying to figure out why all four engines were offline. A handful of helicopters began their rescue, but each could only transport 15 people at a time. So the crew slowly and carefully guided the passengers onto the deck as the helicopters approached. But this was a slow process. The pilots were trying to find their balance above the moving ship, all the while trying to keep their distance from each other in those strong winds. The rescue team calculated it would take more than a day to evacuate everyone on board. They needed a better solution. It was getting dark, the air was becoming colder, but the waves were slowly calming down. By midnight, the engineers found the problem and managed to fix three of the four engines. Finally, they could keep the ship securely in place. After such an eventful evening, morning arrived. 
Around that time, almost half the passengers were evacuated from the ship with helicopters. Two towboats were attached to the ship, one at the front and one at the back. They were ready to take it to a nearby port. The captain called off the rescue operations, and the weather was finally better on that morning. Many people showed up and applauded the cruise ship as it finally arrived in Molda that afternoon. So, from what you understand, engine failure is something that ships can experience, just like airplanes and cars. And there are many reasons why that happens. It could be a mechanical problem, a human error, or even not taking enough care of the engine. The incident I showed you is quite rare. These days, ships' engines are built to high standards and maintained regularly. Now picture this. You are a captain on a large cruise ship, and suddenly, you see the engine controllers blinking in the bridge. You immediately call the chief engineer on board to go down in the engine room and investigate the problem. The engineers will do all the checks to determine if the problem is serious or if it's something that can be fixed during the trip. If the chief engineer decides that the problem is unsolvable, then the captain will have several options. First, they'll most likely send out a signal to get some help in the sea. If the waters are calm, they might be able to tow the ship to a nearby shore. But in rough seas, they'll have to follow a different path. Leaving the ship in the middle of the ocean during a storm and heading to safety will be the last resort. It's more dangerous to move passengers from one ship to another than staying put on a ship that isn't sinking. Lifeboats are also off the equation. They are smaller, and there's a risk they will capsize the minute they touch the waters. Though usually, when an engine fails, it can be fixed on board. Just like what happened with the Viking Sky in Norway. It will cause some delays, but hey, ships are slow anyway. If the engineer can't fix the problem and just one of the engines failed, the ship will still be able to sail, but at a snail's pace. It might also skip some ports to reach its destination faster. But the engineers won't give up, as they would still try to fix the damage. Based on that, the captain will decide whether the trip will continue or get cancelled. About the worst that could happen here would be the ship not reaching the port on its own and being towed to the nearest harbor. Yet the chances of the worst-case scenario happening are minuscule, so you can sail on your next cruise fearlessly.